What would you do if you had an application in which you wanted to push on something or turn something a little bit, and then it have it have it move by itself without any input from you back to that uh, original position? Uh, what what hardware would you use for that? Well, today we're going to talk about springs, and there are a few different kinds that we're going to look at. Um, the first one is this one right here. This is called a compression spring. Uh, compression because you you compress it in order to to store energy in it. Springs are are kind of energy reservoirs, right? You you push it to put energy into it, and then when you uh, release it, that that energy is is um, uh, is is spit back out at you uh, because it has been stored in here. And you know while you're you're pushing on it and holding it there it requires a force. To, to hold it compressed and for some applications you might want that to be the case and, you know applying some usually small amount of force on an object con consistently or constantly so that's a compression spring and we have here a uh, an extension spring uh, and called an extension spring because you extend it in order to put energy into it and then it, it, it contracts extension springs have these uh, these loops at the end so you can loop them around something you might have a dowel pin on this end and maybe a screw goes through on this end and, and you can pull them apart like that. Next we have a torsion spring, this guy here. And torsion springs, unlike the compression or extension springs, um, uh, they, they, um, they hold rotational energy. So uh, they, they produce rotational motion. You can see, you know, with my fingers right there, rotating about the axis that goes through the, the center coil there. Uh, a really common example of these is uh, these little um, refrigerator magnet clips. You can see inside there, there's your torsion spring. Let's see here. You can see it flexing. And it, it produces a rotational motion. Now, I don't, some of you may look at this and think that it doesn't look like it's rotational, but um, if you look at the, the rotation of these tabs there, they are rotating about an axis, the, the axis that you know goes through the center of that, that spring coil. So uh, torsion springs produce rotational motion. Um, we had an application, here, here's another example of, uh, real world example of how you might use a spring. We had an application for which uh, we, we wanted to be able to push on something with up to two pounds of force and we wanted some kind of visual cue to the user that that uh, if two pounds of force was exceeded now these springs they have a what's called a spring constant and that spring constant will allow you to very simply calculate at what amount of compression you reach a certain amount of force so you know if I compress this half an inch how much force am I getting back out? How much force is the spring pushing on my fingers with? If I do, if I go a full inch, now how much force is the spring pushing on my fingers with? So we had this application where we, we wanted to uh, push, here, something like this. We, we wanted to, to push with, uh, it's not being held that well, yeah, that's close enough. With, with no more than two pounds of force. And once we reached two pounds, we wanted some kind of visual indication that two pounds had been uh, reached so that the user would not push any harder than that. Now, you could implement, you know, some kind of force gauge in there, uh, some kind of like load, load button cell, but that's expensive and, you know, pretty high tech solution. Um, our low tech solution was to use a spring and then calculate uh, at what amount of compression we'd get two pounds of force and then we, we just made a marking on the other part and that marking corresponded to the amount of deflection so if our, our pushing starts right here we maybe we had a marking right there so once we reach that that location with you know whatever we're using to push I'm just using this driver as an example but once we we reach that that tick mark on the other part we know okay now we're pushing with two pounds of force, so stop. Don't push any further than that. So that's just one real-world application of how springs can be used. If you've found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer 
or a company interested in training your new engineering hires. Our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.